Hey, I'm Dylan from Live Life Creative. Uh, today I want to go over the Color Zones module in Darktable, a free photo editor. That you can use the Color Zones module to pick one color that you want to control. You can desaturate it or saturate it. You can change the hue of it and you can change the lightness of it. So the HSL settings of a specific color. Now this is really useful if you have a certain color palette you're going for in a photo and you only want to have certain colors in there like maybe you just need to simplify colors so that there's less distraction and things like that and that's what the color zones module is really useful for so let's get into it right now as you can see here i've got a picture of my son's little feet that's his face blurred out in the background so what I like about this photo is this green color here. I kind of like this orange contrasting with it. But what you can see is that there's this different color, like kind of tealish here. There's a little bit of green in here. And there's a little bit of yellow back here. So I already run a, went ahead and done a little bit of this work. So this is a little bit of what we're going to try to go for in the final project. This is the color zones module. I did some adjustments in here already. So you can see the difference right here and then that same color shows up in the background there so that's what we're going to work with so I'm going to hit this button here this resets parameters to the default so when you open up the color zones module you get uh, lightness saturation and hue HSL at the top you get two dots on this line here's lightness what lightness looks like saturation looks like hue looks like so then this eyedropper tool you click this and then you can drop it, as you might imagine, anywhere. And then on the graph, it shows you exactly where that hue is on, in the color zone, where that color is on this graph. So you can find it here when you're in the saturation tab, the hue tab, the lightness tab. And what you can do is hold control and then click on the line and you can create a new control point. There's already two that come up on there. And what you can do is increase the saturation or decrease the saturation or come over to lightness and do the same thing increase the lightness of that hue or the darkness and then do the same thing changing the hue so now you can see one of the bummer things about this if i come over to lightness this line represents how much it's affecting all the other colors around it so all the way almost to orange, it's increasing the, well, almost yellow, it's increasing the lightness. And then beyond this control point, it's making these other colors darker. If you look at the photo, you can see the swaddle blanket, like that's all increasing. Like we don't want all that much to be controlled. We just want this specific color to be affected. So I'm gonna hit default again. Let's come over to saturation. So what you could do, one solution, is to drop your eyedropper wherever you want it, click a control point, and then do two more points on either side. Now let's see. Now when you increase the saturation, it's still affecting colors to the left and to the right a little bit. So what can we do about that? We can uh, bring up the eyedropper, do a control point, and then do two control points on either side. Now when you increase, it'll affect colors a little bit to either side, but you can drag those in. And now you're dealing strictly with that one color that you want to work with, right? But man, creating five control points and then managing them all around like that, that's kind of annoying, right? So that's where this second eyedropper tool comes in. Create a curve based on an area from the image, drag to create a flat curve, control drag to create a positive cur curve, shift drag to create a negative curve. Okay, so just click this and we get this big box around the entire photo. So what this does is gives you five control points containing all the colors that are represented in that photo. So since we've got colors all the way from like the orange of his skin to the green, we've got like blue colors in there, all kinds of colors, it's going to create five control points centered on whatever color is most prominent. And these colors are like all the way across the board because we're getting every color across. So instead of putting the entire photo inside that box, we're just going to click and drag 
and put that box just on the color that we want to work with. So now our five control points, one, two, three, four, and five. These are five control points and the center control point is just this color here. So one, two, three. So it's a quicker way to create um, control points, those five control points that will let you work with just the color that you want to work with. So we drag this all the way down. This gets more desaturated. So one of the issues is that sometimes these control points are so close together, they don't actually contain the entire color that you want to work with. Sometimes you do got to make them a little bit more broad. Pull them left and right a little bit. So now you can see our color is almost completely isolated. We've got a little bit of blue tealish here. Pull this out a little bit more. There we go. Just this way a little bit more. So now we can control just the hue, saturation, and luminance, lightness of just that. So we don't necessarily want it to be that small, uh, that desaturated, excuse me. We want it to rough, I want to get this color to roughly match this green in his blanket. So we're going to leave that saturation there. The big deal is going to be matching this, the hue, the color of this. So we're going to do the same thing. We want to make sure we're controlling that entire color. And before on the saturation is a little bit too small. So we're going to drag these out again. And now we can control the color of all these. And how about that? Just about right away, we can get exactly what we want. Maybe we can zoom in. So it's a little bit too blue. So keep dragging it toward, down towards yellow. Actually, I think dragging it all the way down is exactly what I needed to do. It's a little bit darker, you know, than this. I mean, this blanket's in the light, so obviously this green's gonna be a bit lighter. But, you know, I bet we can manage that a little bit. So click that again. That brings up our little box, our five control points. And as we know from before, we wanna drag these out a little bit to capture a wider range of color. And just drag that up a little bit. There you go, that's a pretty fair match. So now if we turn this off, you can see even in the background, there's a little bit of that sort of bluish tealish. And that's also being changed as well. Now I wanna emphasize this orange color because I wanna get a little bit of this green and orange contrast. So I'm gonna see what I can do to make this orange pop a little bit more. So let's come over maybe over here. Um, let's come over to saturation. Let's grab this big eyedropper again. And let's click and drag it. So now we got that orange there. And we can turn this off so it's not distracting. And let's grab that middle control point that it created and then just drag it all the way up. Now you can see it's not really doing a whole lot with that orange. You know, it's desaturating it some. So what I'm guessing that again, the five control points are a little too narrow for what we really want to do. So there we go. That's a little bit better. So that's definitely emphasizing the orange more here in these dots, but I mean, holy cow, look at his face. What's going on with his face? It's going crazy. So obviously you don't want that to be so orangey. So what you can do is actually create a mask and masking is a whole nother topic. But what you can do is create a drawn mask, click on that button, click on the paintbrush. So it's gonna give you a big brush and if you uh, scroll up, you can make it smaller. If you hold shift and scroll up, it makes the center smaller, but the dotted line around it, that controls the feathering, how it's gonna go from zero, 100 opacity at the middle, to zero opacity and a fade in a gradient. So I actually just want it to not do a whole lot of fading. And we're just gonna paint over his face a little bit. The mask, the mask that I just painted on, it's affecting only his face and not the dots at all. So what you want to do is reverse that. So this button here, it toggles the polarity. Basically that means it's gonna switch around what it's doing. So instead of affecting only here and nothing anywhere else, I click it. It's affecting everywhere else and not at here at all. So now you can see these dots are really nice. So that is how you can use the color zones module 
to change up your colors, modify them, control where they affect in the photo, where they don't affect using masks a little bit. That's been, there's so much you can do with masks. It is amazing, it's an amazing tool. This is really helpful if you're doing stuff like maybe with Christmas photos and you want green and red to really be emphasized and somebody's wearing a shirt that's like orange or something in a Christmas photo and you want to change that orange shirt to a red shirt to match the Christmas theme or stuff like that. Anything you can think of is really nice that way. Hope you enjoyed it. Use the Color Zones tool to your imagination's content. <laughs> And uh, if you found this video useful, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing more dark table tutorials. So I'm Dylan from Live Life Creative. Thanks for watching this video today and have a good rest of your day.